welcome back brand new knitters. I hope you're enjoying the series as much as I am. It's been a lot of fun to kind of go back and review how we learn to knit and how we make things and do things and it certainly made me more conscious about how I go about making the knit stitch and the purl stitch. So it's been a lot of fun. So today we're going to carry on by learning how to decrease and increase using yarn overs which super simple but now we're gonna knit a dishcloth sort of a diamond shape so last time we knitted this one back and forth back and forth and you learned how to purl so now we're gonna just kind of do the same thing only we're not purling you can if you want to but I'll show you how we're gonna knit a diagonal dishcloth which is grandma's favorite dishcloth uh, I don't recall my grandma having any dishcloths like this, but maybe yours did. Anyway, but that's kind of, this pattern is adapted from that one. It's been published and republished over and over and tweaked here and there on Ravelry, and it's really a popular one just because it's simple and it's easy and it makes great gifts. So either, you know, kind of a smaller cloth like this or a larger dishcloth you can wash dishes with, or I just made a little one actually for my daughter for face washing. It's great stuff. All right, let's get started. Okay, here we go. This one is really simple to start with. We're going to do a long tail cast on just like before. So we're going to make a slip knot. Remember where we just turn this over, make a loop, bring the loop up from underneath. Okay, we just make a slip knot. And then I'm just going to use the long tail cast on and do three stitches. So that's going to already count as one. So then I'm just going to make my triangle wrap the yarn counterclockwise and put that loop over and do that one more time and if your tail's a little short you can just make a triangle using your fingers you don't have to have your thumb involved make a small triangle put your needle up through wrap and flip that over the top all right three stitches using whatever cast on method you prefer i just did the little long tail cast on if you missed that in the last video i'll put a link down below where you can go and see that in closer detail if you need a review on that. So this time, this week, we're going to work on increasing and decreasing with knit stitches. So the first thing I'm going to do for this is I'm going to knit two. So remember, we're just going to go in on the left, wrap around, and pull it through. All right, then we're going to do a yarn over, which is just a wrap by itself. So wrap counterclockwise, that's all. So if your yarn is coming from behind because you just completed a knit stitch, you're gonna wrap around once. That's a yarn over and knit the last stitch. So now we've increased to four because of that yarn over. And that's also gonna produce a hole, which for this pattern will be a decorative effect. Okay, turn your work. Now we're just gonna keep doing the same thing and we're gonna, that means we're increasing one stitch every time we knit across. So again, we're gonna knit two, in from the back, or in from the front, catch the sheep. Now I forget how it goes. Anyway, knit two, <laughs> knit two, yarn over. So just wrap counterclockwise and knit to the end of the row. So super simple, it just increases one stitch each time. Now we have five. Okay, turn your work. Knit two, yarn over, knit to the end of the row. So that will be all abbreviated. When you learn learn to read a pattern, all that will be abbreviated as knit two. Whoops, I about dropped that before I got my last one knitted. Okay, so what that looks like in knitting a written instruction would be K2, would be knit two, Yo or Y-O is yarn over and knit to the end of the row, which is usually just K to the end of the row. Or however the pattern author chooses to write that. There really is no standard pattern notation, which is aggravating to some people. But as you can tell, since we're knitting each row, this will be a garter stitch dishcloth. If you want to do it diagonally and you want to practice your purling, you absolutely could. And I'll write instructions in the description down below if you want to make this a stock net stitch dishcloth that has a smooth front side and a bumpy back side. So if you want to do that, you would just choose after your yarn over to knit or purl depending on which side you're on. And then when you get to the last 
two stitches, you would have that garter stitch edge like we did in last week's stitch cloth. But for now, we're just doing a garter, garter stitch diagonal dishcloth where you knit two, yarn over, knit to the end of the row. And because we're increasing one stitch on each row, what's going to happen is it's starting at this point of the triangle and it's growing at about a 45 degree angle. So we're going to keep doing this until, now you can see how that's starting to look, we're going to keep doing this until we have the width and the size that we'd like. Usually that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 stitches makes a really good dishcloth. So keep doing that until you get up to 45 stitches. Um, you will, in a standard six inch, six inch double point, you'll probably end up with, you know, things kind of mashed on a little bit just because uh, 45 stitches is quite a lot for this size of needle. So you may want to switch to uh, straight needles or even if you have a size you know, six or seven circular needle, you could absolutely use that too, just so that it accommodates more comfortably 45 stitches. Things are looking good so far. You can see how this is just starting to make this diamond. So that's pretty cool. I have 30 stitches on here so far and I still need to add another, you know, 13 or so. Now you can stop at whatever halfway point you'd like. If you think that looks great for, you know, half of your washcloth and you can visualize this other half and that's as big as you want to make it then that's fine. Just go stop on an odd number whenever you get to that halfway point. I'm going to go ahead and carry on to the 45 because that's the size that I have found works well for me for my purposes. So I'm going to keep going. I'll probably switch to a longer uh, straight needle um, and then carry on and I'll show you what comes next after the halfway point. So I'm going to continue until I have 45 stitches across. Okay, welcome back. I've knitted and I've kept going knitting my garter stitches with one increase on each side all the way till I've got 45 stitches on my needle. I did go ahead and switch over to these old aluminum needles that I'm pretty sure were my grandmother's um, just because that's like way too wide for me to fit on my double points unless I really scrunch it all together and that's not that comfortable so I did go ahead and switch. So now what we want to do since we've reached the halfway point and we're done increasing we're done increasing here, so now we want to go back the other direction and finish our, our diamond shape. So what I have here is my triangle. Let me zoom out a little here. I've got my triangle here, and one side of my square measures, I mean, like I said, you can make that diagonal whatever size you want. I'm going to guess this is about six inches because my little thing here ends about five. To do that now, we just need to start decreasing. So we're gonna decrease one stitch each time, but I wanna make sure that I maintain my little pattern of yarn overs that I have going on here because we don't want we, we don't want that only to be on half of our square. So in order to do that, we're gonna knit the first stitch, and again, all this will be in the video description down below, but we're gonna knit the first stitch to start off just like we have been, and then we're going to knit two together to decrease one. So we're going to just do exactly like it says. Normally you would go into this first stitch like that and knit, but we're going to knit two together. So we're just going to go into both of those first loops. And if your knitting is super tight, sometimes that can be troublesome. So just think loose thoughts. And you're just going to wrap around like normal and draw your loop through both of those. So that's knit two together. That's easy. Now we're going to do a yarn over because we want to maintain our pattern edging thing we have going on here. So no, mind you, we still have three stitches. We knitted two together, but then we're adding one back. So that cancels that out, right? That cancels out that decrease. So we need to knit two together again. So we really are decreasing one overall. So hopefully that makes sense. So on the pattern down below in the video description, you'll notice it says K1, knit one, K2, tog, T-O-G, which means knit two together, yo for yarn over, and knit two together again. So now we have decreased one stitches because one stitch because all this would have been five stitches before because so we had one, two, three, four, five. So now we only have four with the, including the yarn over. And then simply just knit the rest of the row. Okay, I'll show you that again in a moment. Let me knit to the other end and turn my work and I'll show you that one more time. All right, I'm going to show you that one more time and then you'll be on your way to finishing this dishcloth. So we're just going to knit the first stitch knit two together, which is taking the next two stitches together in from the far left, go in from the front, 
wrap around counterclockwise, counterclockwise like we have been. And that'll feel a little tight, especially if you're a new knitter that's knitting tightly. Then go ahead and do your yarn over like we have been. And then you need to knit two together again. So we have a net result of minus subtracting one stitch. Okay. And then just simply knit to the other end. And it's going to feel really fiddly. And I know that it's simple in theory, but it feels awkward. But again, that's just practice. So be kind to yourself and just, you know, you'll build up the muscle memory and you'll figure out what style of knitting works best for you. All right, I'm going to carry on and go back and forth and continue decreasing, and then I'll show you what it's starting to look like. Things are looking pretty good here. I've gotten to about the halfway point of, in my decreasing. So let me zoom out a little bit. You can see how this is going from the edges here inward. So I'm just going to go ahead and carry on doing that by knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, all the way down until I have three, only three stitches left. And then I'll show you how we're going to finish up. Okay, I've kept going until I only have four stitches left. So this is all looking really good. And now, once you've decreased and you've knitted back and forth until you only have four stitches, we're going to finish up as normal where we're just going to knit the first stitch, knit these two together, and instead of doing another yarn over, I'm just going to leave that the way it is, knit the last one. So now I only have three stitches left. And you can see the pattern here how the yarn over says have come up to the point and then there's the last yarn over right there in the center. So that looks good. So I'm just going to turn over and I'm going to bind off using the standard bind off as we have in the past. So I'm just going to knit the first one, knit the second, pull that first stitch up over the second one like we have been in our previous washcloths and do the very last stitch. Now here at the end, you can either get a crochet hook and make yourself a loop to hang it with, or you can simply cut this and pull it through and weave in the ends like we have on our previous couple of cloths. So that's what I'm going to choose to do is just pull that through and then I'll get my darning needle and weave that in. Okay, so now we have our, our dishcloth and it is a little bit distorted because the second half when you're doing the decreases, the weight of the cloth kind of pulls, pulls it down. But once you get it wet and, you know, reshape it, it'll be fine. All right, looks good. Okay, knitters, dishcloth number three is complete. And I weighed this. My full size one that's that's pretty big, that's about six inches square is 27 grams. So a full ball of this is 70.9 grams. So you do the math, you could get at least two of these larger size. Um, I tell you what, all three that we've done so far, the last three weeks, I've gotten out of one ball of yarn and I still have a tidbit left, but I've also made, you know, the first two we did were a lot, quite a bit smaller. Um, so you could definitely get three, maybe if they were maybe five inches square or four inches square instead of the full six. But anyway, the point is that's like five bucks worth of yarn. And you know, these are my favorite dishcloths. So, and they last a really long time. So I'm really happy about that. And I like that pattern. It's really good TV knitting. But next week, we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to explore some textures and variations with knits and pearls and decreasing and increasing. So we'll carry on learning. So join me next week for that. All right. Watch my Instagram if you're inter at all interested. We're about to expect baby goats. And so springtime on the farm is really busy. I've been out cleaning the barn and making uh, kidding pens because we have four mamas that are due, only two that are due in the next week or so, and then two more subsequently. So baby goats. So watch my Instagram if you're interested in baby goat pictures and little antics, love that. So check out my Instagram, pearl underscore together on Instagram, and I'll be posting pictures over there of farm stuff. So I got to get back outside and carry on with some more chores, but I hope you have a good knitting week. As always, be sure to drop me any comments or questions down below in the Ravelry group and the Facebook group, and springtime on the farm is the best. Follow me on Instagram. All right, talk to you later. Happy knitting!